people are going crazy, everybody is making a rush. Everybody's rushing into the grocery store in the, today's news for oranges. They're buying them like crazy, running down the aisle. And man, they are really trying to get them. Oranges are going, six oranges for one bag. That's all you can get in today's news. And the cashiers are not too happy about it. So y'all, you better hear you up and get down there. Check, check me out again, Education by Spencer News. See you later on. Today's lesson, we will be identifying the independent and dependent variables. We, be, we will be able to find ordered pairs, plot coordinates on a grid, and write as an equation. Let's get started with the lesson. A bag contains six oranges. Which of the following best represents the relationship between the number of bags, B, and the total number of oranges? Let's start off by annotating. I will start off by circling the letter A, the number six, the letter B, and the letter N. Let's read the first sentence over again. A bag contains six oranges. When someone says a bag or if someone gives me a bag, I assume that they're only giving me one bag. So I'm going to determine that one bag contains six oranges. And B is a variable which represents the number of bags. And N is a variable which represents the total number of oranges. Now, let's underline this, the question. Which of the following best represents the relationship between the number of bags B and the total number of uh, oranges? Now, let's box in keywords. I would box in a oh, bag and oranges. This let me know that one bag will contain six oranges. Also, represent the relationship. I know that out of my answer choices, I am looking for the one that best represents the relationship between the number of bags and the total number of oranges. Next, I need to figure out which one is independent and which one is dependent. So when I look at the number of bags and I look at the total number of oranges, I think in my mind, if I had no oranges, would I need any bags? So I am going to say bags depend on oranges. So I will label my independent variable as N for the number of oranges. My dependent variable will be labeled as B for the number of bags. And I will plug these variables into my XY ordered pair. Also, now I need to figure out if it's multiplicative or additive. Well, I know that for every one bag that I have, it's gonna equal six oranges. So if I have two bags, it'll be 12 oranges. And I also know that if I have zero oranges, I would need zero bags, therefore, if anything goes through the origin, it is the multiplicative rule. And I will, first thing I would do is, I would substitute the Y and X variables with N and B. So now that when I write my equation, I know exactly where my information needs to go. Now let's start off with a couple of, of coordinates. I believe we said we will start off with zero for number of oranges and zero for number of bags. And we will put this into a ordered pair. And when we plug zero, zero on a graph, it is directly at the origin. And when we write zero as a equation, it is zero equals K times zero. Now, what happens if I have six oranges then I need one bag. My ordered pair, my ordered pair would be 
six and one. And that means on my graph, I would go over six and up one. When I write my equation, it would be one equals K times six. Next, what if I had 12 oranges? Then I would need two bags. And my ordered pair would be 12 and two. This means on my graph, I would go over 12 spaces and up two. And when I write it as an equation, it would be two equals K times 12. Next, if I had 18 oranges, I would need three bags. My ordered pair would be 18 and three. And on my graph, this means I would go over 18 places and up three. My equation would be three equals K times 18. Now let's finish up the graph. If I, the next coordinate that I would plot would be 24 and four. I would go over 24 spaces and up four. Next, I would go over 30 and I would go up five. I would go over to 36 and I would go up to number six. And finally, I would go over 42 and up to seven. Now, let's see if we can think of a verbal description that will fit our rate, our constant rate. And what I see is, is for every one bag, there is a total of six oranges. So when we look at our constant rate of proportionality, and we think about our rise over our run, we have a rise over run of one over six. Now, let's look at our answer choices. F, B is more, B is six more than N. Well, when we look at our, our table, we can obviously see that N has the greater values. So this answer would be false. Now, when we look at H, six over 36 does have a rate of one over six or a constant rate of proportionality of one over six, but eight over 42 does not. Neither does 10 over 48 or 12 over 60. So this answer is not true. It is false because it does not have a constant rate of one over six or a constant rate of proportionality of one over six. Next, J, the number of oranges and the number of bags. This graph looks almost identical to the graph that we have just plotted. The only thing different is, is that the variables are rearranged. They have number of bags as their, ind as their independent variable and they have number of oranges as their dependent variable. Therefore, their variables are in the wrong spot. That means that their graph is incorrect. The answer would be false. And finally, we'll look at the graph and we can see that G is correct. B equals one, one over six times N. And if we look over here, we basically have it already set up in our equation. We have one equals K times six. Now we know that K is equal to one over six. And if we multiply one over six or one six times six, we will end up with one. Thank you, move on to the next portion of the lesson and enjoy your day.